Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing fantastic. I'm Mystical, and today I'll be telling you about all the things that I've missed while I was sick in XR News. Hopefully getting you up to date in the last two weeks? No, it's been like 10 days of XR News. Quite a bit of interesting things have happened, so let's jump right into the video. So first piece of information that we have is good news for anyone looking to buy a Quest 2, as there's a sale happening right now until the end of the year. As you know, Christmas is coming up and a lot of people buy new VR headsets for Christmas, whether it's as a gift or for themselves. And now with the Quest 2 being $50 cheaper, hopefully that will be an easier purchase for many. The Quest 2 is already one of the cheapest VR headsets out there, and it is still incredibly capable and the differences between it and the quest 3 too many weren't even enough to upgrade to the newer device so take that as you will but the quest 2 is still a great device meta has told upload vr that these discounts will last until the end of december 31st and the discount appears on the meta store and all of meta's supported retailers the 128 gigabyte model is now down from 300 dollars to 250 while the 256 gigabyte model is down from 350 to 300 300. So in case that was on your bucket list of things that you want to purchase, well, hopefully now it's going to be cheaper. The Quest 3 Lite. This is something that's been making news quite a bit in the last while, as it is supposedly going to be a much cheaper version of the Quest 3, perhaps without pancake lenses. And a lot of people were like, what? is the point? D doesn't that just make it a Quest 2? Well, in reality, if it is a cheaper Quest 3, it's probably going to have that more powerful SoC, hopefully with still color pass-through, which means that you would still be able to do AR, maybe not as well if they don't include the depth sensor, but you would still be able to do colored AR. Anyway, Meta hasn't given us any official information on this, so this is just all leaks. But Meta will reportedly bring that Quest 3 Lite to China via a deal with Tencent. The market for virtual reality in China is huge, and Meta bringing a deal with a cheaper device is going to compete against Pico in China. This could be huge for them. Meta and Tencent's aim to sell Quest headsets in China was first reported by Chinese news outlet 36KR back in February, though that report claimed the, the product was planned to be the Quest 2. We did actually talk about this back in February, however, that never happened. In July, the Wall Street Journal reported that the partnership faced challenges because of Mark Zuckerberg's past comments about China. The new report suggests those issues have been resolved, though describes the partnership as provisional, with details still subject to change. Again, if they do manage to bring this much cheaper version of the Quest 3 to China, that will supposedly give the people of China more competition. Competition does end up being better for the end user because other people competing will have to A, either make their product better or B, reduce prices. So let me know what you think about this one down below and what you think about the Quest 3 Lite or Quest Lite in general. Now, great news for current Quest owners, people that aren't waiting on the Quest 3 Lite, I guess. Quest Casting 2.0 lets creators capture uncropped widescreen via PC over USB 3.0. This is great news as you don't have to worry about compression over Wi-Fi when doing something like this. And also you don't have to worry about the crop that appears if you try to capture something that is say a cast, which I've been doing right now through Air Receiver. So my headset casts over to Air Receiver, which is on the computer, and they're both on the same network. However, that does sometimes suffer from compression, bitrate issues, and just overall data loss over Wi-Fi if something isn't entirely stable. This should make things a lot more stable, but I do hate wires, so we will have to see what the positives of this are over something like my current solution. Meta Quest Developer Hub, originally known as Oculus Developer Hub, lets developers manage connected Quest headsets. Meta Quest Developer Hub also has its own casting feature, and with version 4.1, it now has a beta casting 2.0 option. Casting 2.0's cinematic mode solves this by telling the headset to expand the rendering field of view horizontally beyond what's actually visible through the lens to capture a full 16 by 9 image with almost no cropping of the top and bottom. And looking at this new wider casting view, it looks like someone turned on Camera Plus in Beat Saber, if you guys ever used that mod. It looks great. That is what I've been hoping for 
for the longest time. Finally being able to capture 16x9 recordings that aren't just cropped and the quest 3 is now also doing something really weird where it kind of captures mostly the top of the display i'm not sure whether that's just me or that's just the way it looks but it looked kind of funky you can see a lot more it's uncropped and it's 16 by 9 meaning you watching the videos don't get the black bars but unfortunately it is only over usb 3.0 right now not wi-fi or regular usb 2.0 cables i don't like wires so we'll see if i do end up using this or if i'll manage to find some sort of hackety way to make it work over wireless we talked about pico a little while earlier and until now it was missing one of the most popular standalone applications that you can get on vr headsets VRChat. However, VRChat is now available on the Pico 4. VRChat remains the leading social VR platform, with millions of users. On MetaQuest headsets, it's almost always one of the top 10 most popular apps, and on Steam, where it also supports non-VR, it typically has tens of thousands of concurrent players. So, in case you guys own a Pico 4, you can now be excited to jump into VRChat fully standalone. Even though, if you own one of these, what I've seen from our community, most people that have a Pico 4 are actually actually using it with PC VR. So you never really had this issue, but if you're like me, playing standalone is nice sometimes. Not having to turn on that big bulky box behind me, I always see as a good thing. Here's a not so good thing. Apparently, Meta's CTO shot down the prospect of a Quest 3 eye tracking add-on. A downside people see with the Quest 3 right now is the fact that it doesn't have eye tracking. The Quest Pro had it, but the Quest 3 doesn't. And people were hoping for an add-on or something that they can add on to the Quest 3 to give it that eye tracking. People wanted foveated rendering. People wanted to be able to use that quality eye tracking inside apps like VRChat. However, now, apparently, that's being shot down. Now, this isn't to say that a third-party add-on won't be available in the future, but that would mean that it wouldn't be natively supported by applications. Developers would have to develop and add the ability to use that non-native add-on with their app, which a lot of developers probably won't want to do. When asked directly whether a Quest 3 could see an eye tracking and or face tracking add-on in the future during an Instagram AMA, Andrew Bosworth replied, to quote, There's not really a credible way to do eye tracking or upper face tracking underneath the headset as an accessory. It's something that we've thought about every now and then because it would be nice to be able to enable that for people. For eye tracking, you need to have this illumination all the way around the eyes. You're talking about replacing the eye cups. You need to have cameras in multiple positions, which are in kind of quite tight and sensitive areas. That's pretty tough. Lower face tracking is possible, I think, theoretically, but I'm not sure how useful it is without upper face tracking and eye tracking. So it's something we've looked at, and it's really tough with eye tracking to do it outside of the core module itself. That is correct though, he is right there. I mean, the thing is already really, really small. How on earth are you gonna get cameras in there? Well, I'm gonna leave that up to the community to try and figure out. And I bet you that there's already someone trying to hack their way through that somewhere. Face tracking? Yeah, mouth tracking more like. That is possible, even with the Vive facial tracker. We've done it before. As a matter of fact, we've made it wireless with the Quest 2. So I can tell you from experience, that one is possible. Pavlov Shack has now had its full launch and is available on the official Quest store, not through App Lab. So in case that's a game you're interested in, you can be excited to finally be able to see it on the official Quest store. Congratulations to the developers anyway for finally finding their way onto the Quest store. So many people have loved this game throughout the years and I'm so, so happy to finally see it out of the App Lab purgatory. Samsung's Google powered XR headset is apparently set to launch in late 2024. So it's still quite a while away, but this this is one a lot of people are happy for and excited for because it's three of the largest companies in XR working together and the kind of OGs, if you may say so, Google Cardboard, Samsung with their Gear VR, and then Qualcomm creating chipsets for VR headsets. So they are sort of the OGs, if you may. A South Korean newspaper reports Samsung is planning to announce the headset at an event in the second half of 2024, then launch it in December with a limited initial quantity of just 30,000 units. Units. Upload VR can independently confirm that Samsung told developers it plans to launch in late 2024. Samsung's plans could change between now and then, however, as this will be the company's 
first standalone headset. Again, this is one a lot of people are excited for. I don't know about it being its first standalone headset. I mean, theoretically speaking, you could count the Gear VR in as a standalone headset. You know, you slapped a phone inside. It didn't require a computer. That was standalone, right? Right? In case this is one that you're waiting for, hopefully we will get an announcement sometime in the second half of 2024. And then we'll have to see where it goes from there. Uh, the HTC Vive Focus 3 is now in space as HTC Vive has sent a Focus 3 to the International Space Station. So there you go. VR is in space. Imagine, imagine playing Echo VR in space with zero G. Imagine. I don't know why that just popped into my brain now, but it did. So congratulations to HTC Vive for sending a headset off to space. Please launch Echo VR on it. We, we now have a mod that makes that happen. Just do it. Valve hints at its wireless VR headset plans in Steam Deck OLED interview. So this is one that so many people are waiting for, Valve to finally release their wireless XR headset. A lot of people were saying, you know, they made the Steam Deck. They can clearly shove a lot of PC hardware into this tiny little device. Clearly, they should be able to make wireless PC VR happen, right? Well, I guess we'll see. In an interview this week with Norm from Tested, a Valve hardware engineer and product designer hinted at the form that the headset might take and a potential key feature. When asked by Norm about how learnings from Steam Deck might be applied to hardware suited for VR, Yang replied, a lot of it, working with an APU with miniaturization of computers. We don't have anything to announce today in terms of VR, other than that we are still working on VR and are pushing forward on it. But just like Steam Deck, as a result of learning a bunch of stuff from Steam Controller and Steam Link and VR, future products will continue to learn from everything we've done with Steam Deck as well. Alda Hayat then gave his take. Obviously, there's a lot of overlap, technology pieces that we can reuse. Wireless streaming, for example, is very applicable to VR. That benefited Steam Deck as well, improving the wireless streaming experience. But also just establishing relationships with parts suppliers and other hardware partners, the Steam Deck team and the VR team, we work together. So there is a lot of inoculation of ideas and parts and technologies. So again, this has been hinted at many times before. They're still working on VR and they are still working on a headset, but they've got nothing to share with us today, which is very unfortunate. Hopefully they give us an announcement tomorrow, but it is very exciting to see that they are still working on VR. And I, like many others, want to see what Valve has to offer here. They've done a great job in the handheld PC gaming space, and I really want to see them shove all that hardware into a VR headset. And finally, the iPhone 15 Pro can apparently now record spatial video that you will be able to watch on the Apple Vision Pro. So in case this is a device you own, you should now be able to record spatial video, which is very exciting. I'm always really, really happy for stuff like this to come to our tiny little devices. These things are getting smarter every day. And we have so many cameras in the back, it always made me wonder, why would we not be able to do that? And the iPhone has LiDAR as well, which just makes that so much easier for it. Of course, without a LiDAR, you would need to do some sort of camera trickery, but you could already watch those videos from the iPhone 15 Pro on existing VR headsets. And if you want to know how to do that, I will leave a link to the Upload VR article down below. But that is going to be it for today's video. We packed a ton into this one. That says 25 minutes. I'm going to have to edit this down somehow. Either way, though, I'm making it even longer by talking here. So anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day or night, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. Seriously much love and thank you so so much to all the patreons supporting this channel you guys are absolutely incredible amazing thank you so so much and thank you to anyone else supporting the channel in any way shape or form if you guys are not yet part of our community check out our discord and our reddit down below where i want to see you posting your spice memes and as usual if you guys want to be notified of post content coming up on the channel make sure to smack subscribe button with your forehead ding my bell and see you in the next video peace i have expected that to happen